Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. Today we have Double Teamed. This is a Disney Channel original movie that is from 2002. It's an hour and 33 minutes long, and it tells a somewhat true story. Uh, mostly it's a true story of these the, tw the Burge twins. These are two young women who, uh, in the 80s, in high school in the 80s, um, this takes place in 1985, where the story starts anyway, uh, they are volleyball players. Yeah, yeah, I realize they're basketball, wearing basketball uniforms. But in 1985, they're avid volleyball players. They're also probably a whole lot younger than they look uh, because they're super tall. And uh, they don't really go about saying how old they are at this point uh, when we first meet them. Uh, they're, they're barely teenagers is basically what their mom says. Uh, played by uh, Philip McKenzie? Uh, no, Philip, uh, what do I say? M McKenzie Phillips. Philip McKenzie. Mackenzie Phillips. Who what am I thinking? What, what, what one's named Philip? Anyway, uh, <laughs> their mom's uh, Mackenzie Phillips. Their dad is Nick Searcy. Uh, and he, you might, if you ever watched Justified, he was the police chief, uh, you know, alongside Timothy Oliphant in that uh, series. And he's done tons of other character work over the years. Um, but these two twins here uh, are played by Poppy Monroe and Annie McElwain. McElwain. Uh, not twins. Two completely unrelated actresses, uh, but they do look pretty much alike. Um, they, you tell them apart by the way they have their hairstyle a lot of the time. I got mixed up half the time. They're just tall and blonde for the most part. Uh, so yeah, I can understand the confusion. Uh, they they, um, they are going to a, a small Christian school in Redondo Beach, literally steps away from where I'm standing right now. Uh, they, uh, they probably shop at the same mall I shop at, uh, go to the same In-N-Out, who knows. Um, but they're in Redondo Beach uh, at, this, at the beginning of the film at a small Christian school, and their dad is really pushing them to be athletic, to just kick butt in volleyball. And, uh, well, one of his buddies starts telling him, well, hey, you know, the scouts never look at these little schools. They go to the, the bigger schools. You should probably get your girls into a different place so they can get noticed and get a scholarship and become big, powerful, famous volleyball players. Well, Dad, who is very aggressive when it comes to their uh, school sports agendas, uh, he takes them out of their Redondo Beach school and takes them so, so far away to Palos Verdes. California. Now, people who know Southern California know that those cities are within sight of each other. Literally, if you went to the coast, to the southernmost part of Redondo Beach, I'm, I'm pretty sure it even, it's a matter of not even a mile, I think. I, I could be wrong, but it's not even a matter of a mile uh, if you walked it or drove it or whatever you wanted to before you got to Palos Verdes. Yeah, there's, the schools aren't, you know, at the the top of Palos Verdes and the bottom of Redondo Beach. No, they're not right next to each other, but it's a five-minute drive. So these girls get very upset when they have to move to a new school. What about their friends and everything else? Literally, you will see them. You may not be going to the same school. Yes, I understand that is that is a bit of an inconvenience, but literally you're not going anywhere. They make it sound like they're like miles and hundreds of miles away. Uh, yeah. But Palos Verdes also, uh, is t Palos Verdes estates and places like that around there tend to be a little bit more hoity-toity, a little bit more rich, especially when you get along the coastline. Uh, there's these high bluffs that there's some really nice houses along. I've been to a few of them. And uh, they also shot like Pirates of the Caribbean right off those bluffs in the ocean. They had the Black Pearl out there. It's, yeah, it's a nice rich area, but it's not like it's crazy richer than most other uh areas in Redondo Beach. There's a, there's a pretty wealthy a number of people in Redondo Beach. Anyway, <laughs> they get sent to this new school in Palos Verdes. Of course, they get a, a girl who uh, doesn't like them immediately, who's a good foot or two shorter than them. Uh, they're, they look, they're looked at as freaks when they get to the school because they are gigantic and blonde and gorgeous. So every kid in their grade is down this tall and they're up here 
and it's a little annoying, but they try to fit in as best they can. They're not exactly the same person, obviously, even though they're twins. They don't have the same personality. They don't have the same tastes. They don't have the same attitude towards things. So uh, things they start diverting in different directions. When the basketball coach gets a good eye on one of them, he goes, please join my team. Please try out. And uh, soon enough, both of them are dragged into the basketball program where they excel and also make enemies amongst the alpha queen girl on the team, which I don't know if that was a real character or not. A lot of this stuff is, when they make these movies, they create characters uh, in order to create drama and make the story more interesting. Because uh, I, I can't imagine that there was a girl on their team who was just like a total witch, uh, who at the same time had a B story focused on her and dealing with the reason why she's such, um, she doesn't like them very much because her parents aren't around, but the twins' parents are around way too much sometimes, and uh, the girls complain about that, and conflict arises, then they find a reason to bond, and then they become friends, and yeah, I ruined it for you. You, if you were going to watch this, um, you were, it was because you probably have seen it already, you grew up with it from 2002, um, odds are you were never going to watch this, so <laughs> it's not the kind of movie that you're, people are like, oh my gosh, got to get that, got to watch that double teamed, uh, you know, but <laughs> it's a, uh, it's not the kind of movie I would have chosen to watch myself. Uh, it, it's like I said, it's based in reality. It's a, it's based on a true story. These are real uh, women who went, actually went on to join the WNBA, and that's the reason why it was made. Because I mean, the WNBA was uh, kind of a thing that uh, started out probably in the '90s or so. I can't remember when that happened, but uh, it was a, a women's professional basketball team. Holy cow! That's a, it's a, a big deal. And I mean, come on, two. Blonde twins from from Redondo Beach or Palos Verdes. And there's a story for you, Disney. Although it looks like they were shot, half of this was shot in Burbank, but still. How do I know? It just... I don't think there's any gas lamps along the streets in Redondo Beach. I could be wrong. I I think I've been to most of it, but I, I maybe I've missed a street. Anyway, um, it's, it's an alright story. There's a lot of basketball in this. It's, I think it's they, they do spend a lot of time on the court. Uh, there's a little bit of drama. There's a cute boy that they all like. Mm, they all have the hots for. Um, there's an injury at some point. Uh, there's a dramatic uh, comeback. You know, it's it's a sports movie, so yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get that. It's it's to be expected, and uh, it's meant to heighten all the drama. Uh, what what they finish off with, and, and this yeah, it's like I said, they join the WNBA, so I'm not really spoiling anything. They join the WNBA, and there's a scene at the very end where it looks like the girls are facing off against each other on two different teams: the Los Angeles Sparks versus the Monarchs or something. I think I don't know what town they're from, and they uh, they face off in the court. That never happened because they were in the WNBA at different times in the 90s, late 90s. So um, it's a neat little fantasy kind of situation to resolve the story. But uh, yeah, it's if you're, you like these true life story, uh, sports, you know, rise to power, rise to, to championship kind of situation, uh, kind of stories, well, you might like this. And uh, it's, it's a good uh, inspirational story for if you got... Uh, a uh, girl in your family who is uh, wanting to, you know, is a, is a big basketball fan, maybe uh, you show this to them, you know? I don't know. Might get a kick out of it. Might be bored to death. I have no idea. Your kids are not my concern, and I do not know who what they're like. But uh, I will <laughs> recommend it to people who like basketball, and uh, especially girls who are uh, coming up in the basketball world. But it is 20 years old, so almost. So... You've been warned. Uh, although, the very weird thing is that even though this takes place in the 80s, almost none of the music sounds like the 80s. There's a, like, a party at one point that sounds like it could have been the 80s, but it was. there's no 80s pop tunes being played. There's no you know, Simple Minds, Don't You Forget About Me, suddenly playing in the background, or you know, Kasha Goo Goo or anything. We're going to hear it and ask your parents. Um, but yeah, beyond that, it's, uh, it, it's a lot of like... To your 2000 type of music like I don't know it's it's just it's that Disney soundtrack kind of stuff but pop
pop. You know, Disney pop music. So yeah, I don't think they made a big effort to really focus on the music in this thing. But, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, so yeah, it's a... Uh, it's only for this movie is only for the sports lovers. I can't say it. <laughs> Go out and watch it. Um, but yeah, it's not made for me. It wasn't. It wasn't made for me. So not everything's for me. Not everything's for you. So hey, if this is your, if this is your bag, go for it. Otherwise, yeah, you, know, you can live without seeing it. I'm just being honest. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you. Uh, there's uh, I got Mackenzie Phillips and Nick Cersei. Um, so yeah, have fun with it if you do decide to dive into it. It it feels a lot longer than it actually is. I again, the only thing that really held my interest was paying attention to locations in this thing, because I don't care about basketball. It's just my thing, not my thing. So yeah, hey, they, they, the girls do a great enough job uh, acting wise. Uh, not everybody's a a great actor in this thing, but the girls do great. They're they're believable. They're uh, you're, you're they're you're. You feel empathy towards them. You're you're sympathetic to their struggles and things like that. They they uh, play off each other really well uh, as they act like sisters. And uh, I think they actually do a lot of their own basketball playing in this. It's I don't think they throw in doubles. If they do, it's that's a lot of tall blonde girls they just throw into a movie. But so yeah, they uh, I think they do their own their real own playing in this game in this movie. So good for them. I could be wrong, but. Good for them. Uh, let's pick tomorrow's episode. 375. 375. <laughs> ah, okay. We just had... Uh, oh, we had penguins a little while ago. But we had 376 a little while ago. But this time we have a short. And it is... Party Animals. Party Animals is next. I, I'm not sure what that's related to, if that's an old classic or if it's something related to Pixar or something. Who knows? Party Animal, an, Animals. Party Animals on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that.